What's going on guys, Dots Gaming here, and welcome to an updated version of my best beginner gear sets for Endgame Guide. I've been going through all of my beginner guides and seeing which ones needed to be updated, and as you guys saw, I did just recently update my weapons guide, and now I am updating this best beginner gear sets for Endgame Guide for beginners. Not many more of my other beginner guys need to be updated, and if they do, you will see updates for them. I know, like, the Vampire and Werewolf guide needs to be updated for Greymoor um, with the Vampire Genes for coming, and, of course, I'm going to do my yearly complete beginner guide update. But from what I've been able to tell, all the other guides are still pretty much relevant and stuff hasn't changed, but the gear set recommendations from this guide are a bit out of date, so I wanted to make sure to update them for you guys so that you uh, can be using that, that best beginner gear at the end of the game. So what this guide is going to contain is gear sets that are either very, very easy to acquire because they're just overlands gear, or um, you know you, like, you could just farm them in overlands, or you could just purchase it from a guild trader. And I'm also going to recommend crafted gear since you can either craft that gear yourself or have a friend slash guildmate craft it for you. I got questions on the last time I made this. Why are you not including dungeon sets? And the reason I'm not is because I wanted the goal for this guide to be gear sets that you can acquire nearly instantly. Like when you hit CP 160, just really good beginner gear setups that you can get easily and that you can use to farm up the monster sets that you need. And then from there, you'll have a pretty decent and competent setup until you can eventually either farm up other gear sets you want, or if you just wanna stick with this, that will be perfectly fine. So starting off with Magica DPS, we're gonna zoom in a little bit more here. Magica DPS, we are going to have, for our monster set, we have three options, Grothdar, Valken Scoria, or Alambris. Grothdar is going to be your best option for if you're like a melee Magicka damage dealer, so someone like, uh, you know, Magicka Templar or Magicka Dragon Knight. Valken Scoria is going to be for those of you who are ranged damage dealers, and then Alambris is going to be more specifically for um, Magicka Sorks who take really big advantage out of both shock and fire damage types. So, again, Grothdar for melee, Falcon Scoria for range, Alambris for those of you who are going to be using both shock and fire damage types. Our main five piece for the build is going to be Julianos, which gives two lines of weapon critical, a line of maximum magicka, and 300 spell damage. Julianos is just one of the most staple magicka DPS sets. It's never really the best set, but it's never the worst. It's always a very, very solid option for magic dps and when i say the best i mean like if you compare it to like the meta gear sets but it's always a very solid set 100 of the time it's always a good option and the best part is it's crafted so you can basically pair this with an overland set and you'll have a good combination of gear now the most com uh, common or excuse me the best overland sets that i'd probably recommend are going to depend on your character if you're a magic dragon knight you're going to want to use silks of the sun which gives a line of maximum health, a line of maximum magicka, a line of spell damage, and 400 spell damage on your flame damage abilities. Dra you know, all the Dragon Knight damage skills are pretty much going to be dealing flame damage with the exception of a couple, so you're going to take really good advantage out of Silks of the Sun. If you are using a pet, you're going to want to use Necropotence, which gives five straight lines of maximum magicka, with the fifth piece being while your pet's active, you gain that huge magicka bonus. So if you use a pet, Necro is going to be what you want to do. Everyone else is going to want to use Mother Sorrow, which gives one line of maximum magicka and then big boosts to your spell critical. Really, really good set for increasing that crit. So you're always, you know, you're critting as frequently as possible. Now, in terms of the general uh, way that that build is going to be set up, I've kind of shuffled some things around. You're going to want to make your helmet heavy and your shoulders medium with the rest of your body pieces being light and the reason being for that is that if you ever choose to replace you know some of this body gear with let's say uh i don't know some more meta setups you'll be able to do that without like needing to refarm your head and shoulders because they'll be the correct gear weight so we're running a 511 one heavy one medium and five light all divines all magicka enchants, or if your health is below like 16.5, 17k, I'd recommend putting a health glyph on your helmet. Um, now, I'm recommending this time around too, 
and you're going to see this for the other uh, the stamina damage setup as well, that the belt, boots, necklace, and rings are going to be your overland set. I used to have it so that the weapons were also overland as well, but if you do it this way, where you don't get the weapons from the overland setups, it's way easier to get this setup. Um, overland weapons can generally be extremely expensive, so by crafting your weapons being and making them Julianos, it makes this whole entire setup way cheaper to acquire. Um, so we're going to be using our overland stuff on the necklace and rings and then any two body pieces that you want that is not your head and shoulders. So gloves, legs, chest, belt, boots, any two um, can be the overland setup. But then you want three body Julianos pieces and the two Julianos weapons. And for your jewelry, you want it to be all arcane. Um, one Magicka Recovery Glyph and two Spell Damage Glyphs. I'm recommending the Magicka Recovery, and I'm going to do the same thing for Stamina with Stamina Recovery, just for new players, just because I think the extra sustain will help them out a lot. And your front bar weapon is going to be a Fire Staff that's precise with a Flame Enchant, and your back bar weapon is going to be Fire or Lightning infused with Weapon and Spell Damage. Most of the time, it's going to be Fire. Um, lightning can potentially be used by, like, Sorks, but overall, I would recommend... Everyone use a fire staff. I just wanted to put the lightning here to, to let you know that it is potentially an option if you do want to use it. But for the most part, it's going to be double fire infused with that berserker glyph on the back bar. Now, moving into stamina damage dealers. I got to zoom out so I can fit this whole freaking chart here. You're going to want to use one of two sets. Krogs or Selene's for your monster set. Krog is when you deal physical, uh, when you deal damage, you have a 10% chance to spawn drug limbs that uh, create shockwaves in front of you, dealing physical damage every 0.4 seconds or 1.2 seconds, and this could occur once every three seconds. Or Selene, when you deal direct melee damage, you have a 15% chance to call on a primal spirit that mauls the closest enemy in front of you after 1.3 seconds for 12k physical damage. This can occur once every four seconds. Both of these monster sets are very good. You can just use whichever one you prefer. Now, one of our five pieces is going to be Hunting's Rage, which is the stamina equivalent to Julianos. Two lines of weapon critical, a line of maximum stamina, and a big boost to your weapon damage on that five piece. Again, very similar to Julianos. It's never the meta, it's never really a meta set, but it's never a bad set. It is always, always a very solid option to use for dealing damage in PvE, and that's why we are running it on this beginner setup. And then uh, we are using a different five piece. I used to have Spriggins on this, but I have changed it to a set that I think is going to be better, and that is going to be Briarheart, which has a line of weapon critical, a line of maximum stam, and a line, another line of weapon critical. And when you deal critical damage, you have a 10% chance to increase your weapon damage by 449 for 10 seconds. While this effect is active, your critical strikes heal you for 700 health. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. Now, I am recording this video prior to Harrowstorm's release. When Harrowstorm comes out, uh, this is going to be a bit different of a five piece, and it's actually going to be better than this. And so we're looking at this five piece here on the screen. It's actually going to uh, increase the weapon damage of the set from 449 to 450. So we're getting an additional one weapon damage. So that is a prettier number. Um, the proc chance is going up to 25% from 10%. And there is no internal cooldown on the heal anymore. That 700 heal. There's no internal cooldown anymore. But the heal will be decreased to 378 from that, you know, 700-ish health. So the set overall is being buffed. So perfect time to get your hands on Briarheart. Now, similarly to the Magicka setup, I'm going to recommend that you get Briarheart on your jewelry and two body pieces again, because if you try to get the weapons, the weapons are stupidly expensive. So I think it's easier to craft your weapons with Hundings and keep Briarheart on your jewelry and body. Now, the setup for this is going to be one heavy, and six medium. We don't really need the light piece. Um, I use the heavy primarily for the extra boost to health. Um, you can run seven medium if you'd like, but I think for a newer player, having the six medium and one heavy is the way to go. You get the bit of a, an extra 2% from those undaunted passives, and I just think it's more beneficial to even have that little bit of extra resistance. We're going to want to go all divines, um, all stamina. If your health, again, is below that 16.5, 17k mark, um, you're going to want to use one health glyph. By the way, when I refer to 16.5, 17K, I mean once you have like your buff food, um, all your passives, you, all that jazz. That's what I'm referring to. Um, and then you want to do all robust for your jewelry, one with stamina recovery and two weapon damage. 
You want a one-handed axe, precise, with a poison glyph, one-handed dagger, sharpened with an absorbed stamina glyph, and a back bar infused bow with a weapon and spell damage glyph. Now, if you can't afford Briarheart, um, for some reason, like, if there's any reason you can't afford Briarheart, what I would instead do is wear agility on your, like, uh, rings in your necklace, and you can use endurance for your weapons and move the Hunding's Rage back onto your body. So if, like, Briarheart is just super out of your price range for some reason, uh, you, you can do that, but um, I would recommend saving up for Briarheart. It's really, really worth the uh, saving up for it. Next up, we have tanks. Now, for our tank, we are going to have our monster set being two, uh, two pieces of blood spawn. So, blood spawn adds a line of stamina recovery, and when you take damage, you have a 6% chance to generate ultimate and increase your resistance for 6 seconds. This is going to occur once every 6 seconds. So, very, very good monster helm for tanks. This, this set is one of the best sets in the game. Um, gives you everything you need. Stamina recovery, ultimate, extra resist. Uh, it, it is really just the perfect tank monster set. Now, our one of our five pieces, and I have it on the weapons again for the same reason that I've explained throughout this guide, is going to be Torx Pact. Torx Pact is a line of spell damage, a line of maximum health, a line of armor, and decreases the weapon enchantment cooldown and increases non-oblivion damage enchantment potency by 30%. So this basically makes that back bar crusher enchant incredibly strong, which is the reason that we are running Torx Pact, is to boost up that crusher enchant. And then our other five pieces is going to be Plague Doctor, which gives us two lines of maximum health, a line of healing taken, and then a massive boost to our maximum health to help keep our health pool nice and high. In terms of the weights and traits and all that jazz, we are going to be running five pieces of heavy, uh, medium gloves, and a light belt. And the reason is for um, resistance optimization, but this also allows us to take advantage of all of those juicy, undaunted passives. You're going to want uh, infused on your head, your legs, and your chest to boost up those uh, prismatic glyphs, or you could just do one health, one stamina, one magicka if you can't afford the prismatics, and then sturdy on all of the smaller pieces with health glyphs on those. You're also going to have all healthy Plague Doctor jewelry, one reduced block cost, and two magicka recovery, a decisive one-handed weapon with an absorbed stamina glyph, a sturdy shield with a health glyph, and infused crusher I would recommend an ice staff on the back bar. I have the lightning staff here just to kind of give it a little bit of a shout out, but I do think that the ice staff is going to be easier because um, ice staff still gives you the block mitigation passives from uh, the Destro line, and you still do gain a boost to your uh, resistance a bit. Um, lightning staff does give no defensive benefits. It helps keep the concussion off balance up on enemies, and it's a more advanced taking style. So that's why I generally recommend ice. For, for most people, but again, I just want to mention the lightning here. If you do use ice, though, be sure not to put points into Trifocus because we do not want our block to cost Magicka. We want it to still cost Stamina. The final setup that I want to go over, and actually the one that inspired me to do this guide revamp, is the healer setup. I totally redid the healer setup for this guide, and I really like this version way more than the one from the last guide. So we have, for our monster set, two pieces of Night Flame. Gives us a line of maximum magicka. When you heal yourself or an ally, you have a 10% chance to summon a totem for six seconds that heals you and your allies within five meters for 2903 health every second. This could occur once every 10 seconds. So this just gives a nice AoE heal to the group when you're actively trying to heal them up. Just helps pad your healing and keep the whole group topped off in uh situations where we we really need that extra healing it's a very very nice monster to have and does a lot of additional healing one of our five pieces our crafted one is armor of the seducer two lines of magic recovery a line of maximum magicka and reduce the cost of your magic abilities by 10 percent healers are all about making sure that we can cast as much as many skills as we want and make sure that we don't run out of that magicka so reducing the cost of those magic abilities is going to be very important to make sure that we're always able to cast our heals always able to buff our allies and seducer just helps uh keep that going now a five piece that i've never really recommended or used before and just kind of saw when i was going through my list of potential set possibilities but one that i think will help new healers learn good habits is the wisdom of vanis set so it gives two lines of magic uh maximum magic a line of magic recovery and after landing a fully charged heavy attack you gain major mending for three seconds increasing your healing done by 25 percent and this duration is increased with each rank of the restoration staff passive of essence drain when using the restoration staff so i think this set 
will help new healers learn the proper way of weaving those heavy attacks in with their heals and trying to get those off at the right times because you have a set that is going to give you direct benefit from putting those heavy attacks into place. It'll also make that major mending duration nice and long to, you know, help you, you know, if you don't need to, if you're not able to do them as frequently because you're new and you're worried about weaving them in, that extra duration will really help you out. And I, I just think this is a good set for learning good habits and keep it and really help you keep up that uptime of major mending so that you can have the strongest healing output possible. Now, in terms of our weights and stuff, we are using one piece of heavy on the head and medium on the shoulders for these undaunted passives with five light on the body. We're using infused head, legs, and chest for our um, prismatic glyphs. Now, again, if you can't afford prismatics, what I would do is actually recommend a uh, magica for the head. Stamina for the legs and health for the chest, similarly to how I did for the tank setup. Uh, you want to do uh, divines on all the small pieces. And for the jewelry, you want to do all arcane, all magic recovery. The restoration staff, you want to be powered with the weapon spell damage. And you want a back bar lightning staff with a charged shot glyph to help make sure you keep that up uh, off balance uptime up. But that is it, guys, for me. The best beginner gear sets for endgame. These are all going to be very effective for doing your veteran dungeons, for doing you know solo content, and for doing some of the easier vet trials. Um, I think you can take any of these setups into the easier, like the Craglorn trials, and do perfectly fine. So if you guys enjoyed this guide, if you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you smacked a like on it. Any questions about any of these setups, please leave a comment below. Um, I really do like this version of the guide way more than my old ones, so hopefully you guys do as well. And to keep up with the rest of the other gaming content and ESO content here on the Dots Gaming YouTube channel, please hit that sub button as well as the bell to keep notifications on. So thank you all for stopping by today. Very much appreciate it. As always, I'm Dots Gaming. I'll see you all in the next video.